I'm Heidi, and today I'm going to be demonstrating how you can build a soft rock radio from a kit with just ingredients, or with just basic things that you have around the house. To start with, you'll need your soft rock 40 kit. You will also need something like this cardboard cutout here to place the board into for solder paste. With your kit, I believe should be included a stencil which has small holes cut in it for the solder paste to be placed very precisely over the board. So to start with, what you're going to want to do is place your board inside the cutout that you've made and then take your stencil and try to line it up very carefully on top like so. If you look closely, you'll be able to see that when the holes are lined up correctly, you can sort of see it through. So when you have it lined up as closely as possible, use something like scotch tape to go ahead and secure, oh, I made it slip, to make it secure to your cardboard. And then you should have some solder paste. something along the lines of this. Now to apply the paste over the board, remove the end so you can dispense a little bit more, and just squeeze a small amount, various places where it's going to be used most. Go ahead and put that back on to keep it from drying out. And then Use some sort of spreading implement. I'm using uh, this, but anything else that has a long straight edge like this should work equally well. And then very carefully use it to spread and smear the paste over top of your stencil so that it fits down through the holes onto the board. And a little more here. If you have a wider variety of tools, it's much easier to do this um, with something like a wooden construction, but this by itself should do the trick. Alright, now I'm going to lift the stencil off to see what it looks like underneath. Alright, as you can see, uh, it's smeared a tiny bit because it's not perfectly stable, and I've missed a little bit right there, but other than that, you've got a small pool of solder in every place that needs to make contact with your part. So, to fix that one that needs to be fixed, I'm going to leave this nozzle on, and just basically try to inject a small small amount onto it. A little bit more. Okay. Alright. Now that you've got your solder applied to the board in the more or less correct places, uh, I should point out that while you do want to be careful, as long as they're in mostly the right place, the reflow uh, process will actually kind of centralize it and suck it into the right place, so if you're a little bit off, it's not going to be the end of the world, but you want to be careful with it. Alright, but now that we have the solder paste put on, next we're going to want to start applying our parts. And as you may have noticed, these are very small parts, but it is still entirely possible to do by hand. First of all, you're going to want to uh, very carefully Take the uh, information that's on the website, they'll give you a schematic, as well as there will be available a couple of pictures that show the uh, silk screen on top of the board itself. And between this information and the instructions on the website, you should be able to tell what parts go where. So you'll want to kind of lay out ahead of time what parts you're going to be using and, you know, get those ready to make sure you have everything. Once you've got all that done, you're going to start placing. So what I've got here to start with is a resistor that's going to be put uh, on the top left-hand corner of the board that I've got in front of me, once I can get this open. 
All right, so go ahead and I'm going to be using two of them right now, so I'll leave the other one where I know where it is. And now I've, when I look to see what the placement of these two pieces are, I find them right here on the picture, so that way I know for sure which the way they're supposed to be directed. So, first we've got this. Oh, so I got it not quite in the right place, but that's okay because you can use something very small and fine to sort of nudge it in the right place. You just want to be careful not to let your solder smear all over the place. So you want to center your part in such a way that the contacts on the ends are entirely over the pads underneath and are in full contact with the solder paste that you put down. So try to be steady as you're uh, setting the piece down, but if you're not, it's not the end of the world. There we go. Now, the larger pieces like these uh, IC units, are a little bit trickier because, as you see, they've got a lot of different contact points that have to be lined up with the contact points here. It also, for these, matters which direction you put them on the board. When you look carefully at the piece, you'll see that there's a line here or a small dot here. And on the schematic or the silk screen, there is there should be an indication of either what is pin 1, or it will have a bar or line on one side. So you want to li basically line up pin 1 with pin 1. And pin 1 on these sort of IC units is uh, illustrated by the bar or the small point. So, let's see, I've got... Pin 1 is this one. And U1 goes right here. So, I can see that this line is supposed to go facing this way, so I need to turn the part around and place it, this one's going to be trickier, like this way. Now, you don't want to use your tweezers to like clamp in on the sides because you could bend the pins, so either with your fingers or with some other tool or whatever works. Go ahead and grab that very carefully. Try to place it on top of the pads. And again, you can use your uh, whatever you're using to push things around with to just kind of make sure it's centered there. As you can see, the solder paste is all running together there. Once we put it in the oven for reflow, it, those should separate out and connect individually to each pin. If they don't, then you're going to have a little bit of after-the-case sort of fix-up work to do. But for now, we'll just worry about getting it placed as closely as we can. Alright, and then for this one, that is going to be facing this way. There's the indication showing that this is pin 1, and here's the indication showing that this is pin 1. Oh, I got it upside down. That's no good. If you do drop a piece, when you remove it, just try very hard to get it to not to drag all of your solder paste off again, or else you will have a fair amount of work in front of you trying to get that put back. So, why don't I just try... it this way. Also, you'll notice that a lot of these parts have very small numbers printed on them. If you're not sure which part belongs in which space, um, a part number should be, you know, provided somewhere on the schematic. And if you look very, very, very closely, you can actually read out the numbers. So you want to make sure that you have the right one for the right spot. All right, so that should be good for placing parts. All right, now that you've got all your parts placed in their correct position, it's time to actually bake the board to make the solder paste uh, actually, you know, do what it's supposed to do. So here is the toaster oven that I'm using here, and you can use a similar toaster oven at home. Um, 
Most of them should work as long as it goes up to about 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which happens to be the maximum on this one, which happens to also be a very good temperature for solder paste. So, once you've got it heated up, you're going to want to take a pair of pliers or something, because you're not going to want to stick your hand in there, but very carefully slide the board into the oven. And try, much like I'm going to try right now, not to burn yourself. You don't want to let it jar around very much as you're putting it in, because, how? because that solder paste is... Uh, still basically loose enough that you can easily move your parts around and make it so that they're not in the right spot. Alright, so now that I've got that in there, I'm going to go ahead and close the door. And now what you need to do is watch it closely. And it may be hard to come through in the video, but when the reflow happens, you will be able to see it. Everything will turn all of the solder paste will basically turn shiny and you'll be able to see it move and kind of get sucked towards the part. Once you start seeing that happen, you're going to want to give it about another 30 seconds, open the door and take it out again. So let's see if we will be able to see that process happen through this window door here. It should take somewhere between a minute to two minutes or less in an oven of this temperature. If your temperature is much lower, it might not happen at all, and you also don't want to leave your board in here indefinitely because that will uh, damage the parts. They can be under fairly high temperatures for a short period of time, just not for an extended long period of time. It's taking a while. I'm not sure how well they can see in the video either. Yeah, probably can't see terribly well. Um, so hopefully I've described the process. Yeah.